you have your Bibles, I'm going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. It's the say in the Bible said, It is good when they said, Let us go up to the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 In the New Testament it says, Whose house are ye? <laughs> we, we're, we are the house of the Lord. Don't, he says, don't, don't be ignorant of this fact that you are the temple of God. So we are uh, continuing. We've been talking about the 35 things that the Holy Ghost does, or the Holy Spirit does, however you want to say it, so people are not comfortable saying Holy Ghost. It's in the Bible. I'm okay with it. You can say Holy Ghost, you can say Holy Spirit, you can say either one, because it's all about the very same thing. And I, I, don't, I don't even want to say it's a thing, because it's a He. It's a He, the third part of the Godhead. And they're all He. And you got a problem with them being a He, and you take it up with the boss. Yeah, they're all He. Right, there's, there's no female side of that, amen? It's all a He. You know, may catch some flack for that, and you know what? I don't care. Because the Bible says they're all a He. So we, we stand on that to heat. We do have some extra, we did have, where are they at? Extra papers. Anybody need a paper? That's got the list of the 35 things on there. Yeah, there's a few. I'm so thankful. I remember for the longest time I had to do all the worship by myself. And I prayed, Lord God, send me somebody, anybody. And I would have settled for anybody, but I got blessed abundantly Amen. by amazing voices and amazing talents and everything else. Man, what a, what a tremendous blessing to be able to worship together. Just about brings a tear to my eyes. But First Peter, y'all there? First Peter. Mm -hmm. If you look on your list, I'm not going in any certain order on your list. Actually, I had a, a method to my madness of why I was going in the order that I am. Your list goes da 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 da. I'm not going by that order, but we do have four on the list left, and we're starting with number 17. Number 17 on your list, which says, He helps to obey. Amen. The Holy Spirit helps to obey. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. We're going to read 22 through 25. It says, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower the flower faileth away, falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Amen. Amen. That's that's some good scripture, and I'm going to pray again. I'm not ready to pray. I'm going to pray again. Is that all right? Dear Heavenly Father and Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you, Father God, for, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God, for moving through each and every one of us, helping us and drawing us closer to you, giving us all the tools we need to be a reflection of you in this dark world. And I thank you, Father God, for, for opening our understanding that we could understand your scripture today. Help us to have ears to hear and eyes to see and a mouth that speaks of the good tidings of Jesus Christ. Help us, Father God, to put away... Put away things that would cloud our judgment, Lord. Just put away, put away uh, distractions, Father God, that we can focus upon you and learn from you today and grasp onto these truths that are found in your word. And we love you so much. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 So start back at 22. Seeing ye have, is that have, is, is that future tense? Is that something's going to happen in the future or is that something that has happened? Right? You have. You've already done this. He's talking to people that have already accomplished this. Now we can look at it and say, well, if they've already accomplished this, then what do I have to do? I have work to do. Right? I have something to do to complete what they seemingly have done. Amen? Amen. 
And, and some people would say, well, this is not possible. Listen, well, with God, I believe the Scripture says, all things are possible. Amen. With God, all things are possible. So these people, he, Peter is writing to, which is believers, the church, he says, seeing you, ye have purified your souls. Past tense. How did you do that? How, what, what was the method by which you purified your souls? Right? The Holy Spirit of God, right? When we come to Jesus, and we shouldn't confuse this salvation with sanctification. When we come to Jesus, He washed us clean, whiter than snow. Right? Amen. And from that time on, we are provided with ample opportunities to serve Him. Ample opportunities to make the correct, right decisions which reflect Him on earth. Amen? The right decisions which give Him glory and praise. Do we always do that? No. When we're presented with those decisions, sometimes we shy away. We do not do what pleases God. Right? That's why we have work to do to attain what which seemingly they have already did. See, see, now, now he's not, you know, Paul's writing this, it's, he's not writing this to dead people, are they, that are, that are worshiping around the throne? No. These are people that are alive. He's writing this to their, to them for their education via the word of God. See, you have purified your souls in obeying the truth. Now in that, who, who's the one there in the purifying? Well, it's kind of the, the, the both things, Right? Seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Holy Spirit. It's, he's the how, but he, he provides the means, but who has to obey? We do. He provides the choosing, the point of decision, right? Here it is. Here's the choice. I'm telling you what to do, and you can say no. Right? We have the free will that God blessed us with, which is sometimes a curse seemingly, to choose to either obey or disobey Him all day, every day. Right? So the Spirit provides this is through the means by which we be purified. It's like, uh, like mission impossible. Here's your mission, if you so choose to accept it. If not, you know, it fries up and smoke. And we don't want to be in the smoking section, do we? <laughs> Amen. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, truth through the Spirit. My Bible's got that good big old capital S. That, so that means that's the Holy Spirit of God. The third part of the, of the Godhead. The one in whom we, we should be filled with and put our trust in and be aligned with and get tuned into. Amen. And it says... You have made the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. So this obedience has worked its way to a point unfeigned love. It's, it, it's, it's love that it's, doesn't have a cap on it. Right? It's, it's not restricted. It's unfeigned love for who? The brethren, the church. I know we can get on a soapbox and well, you don't see this in the church happening too much anyway, do you? Well, you may not. Doesn't mean it's right. It just means that we have work to do. Amen? Because there's, there's something lacking in our obedience that has not led to unfeigned love of the brethren. And sistering is included in the brethren. Amen? That, let's talk about the body of Christ as a whole. Right? Through unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Don't just love one another, but love each other out of a pure heart. With no motives. No, no backhanded deals. Well, if I do this for them, then they'll do that for me. You know, if I love them like this, then you know there, there's no ulterior motives involved. Saying so I'm gonna love them regardless. They can hate me for the rest of my life. I don't care, but I'm going to love them. Amen? Unfeigned love of the brethren. Love that is fervent. What, what's a fervent? They talk about fervent prayers. We've been studying in, in James and 
the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, right? So what's a fervent prayer? It, 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 it ain't just you reciting some words. It ain't just going through the motions. It's got power. It's got gusto. It's got oomph behind it. It's a prayer that, that means something. It's, it's, it's you know, the, the, the word in Scripture is dunamis, which is where we get the word dynamite from. It's, it's got something behind it. It's a prayer with some power and fervency. Amen? Well, I uh, mean, like, uh, some people are, 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 can be fervent about football. Amen? We just went fishing. We had a good time fishing. Caught a big old mess of fish. Whenever I get something on my line, it goes, Barrel, I'm pretty fervent. I gotta get that thing in. <laughs> I know, she, she laughed. I, I, I fish with this little bitty pole. No, I'm it, saying it, your pole bends and it's a nitty bitty fish. Yeah, I know, I got this little bitty pole and a little bitty fish has been my pole. But I have fun. <laughs> and I got it in the Gotta go hospital. But the point is, I'm fervent. Gotta land that fish, right? In the same way when we pray. And when we love the brethren, it should be with the same fervency and eagerness and desire to love one another. Amen? And, and, and continuing on. To love one another with pure heart fervently. And then it says, being born again. So this is not writing to people that need to be born again. It's that they, they already have been. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible now, now the corruptible seed, that, that man, man makes corruptible seed, right? I worked in the fertilizer business, I know about corruptible seed. Most of it is corruptible. But not by corruptible seed, but incorruptible. What's, what's the incorruptible seed? By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. What you, but the, the parable of the sower, what's, what's the seed? It's the word of God. It's the Word of God that we're supposed to be spreading around. Being born again. And what are we born again by? The Word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. In verse 24. And I'm going to get back to 23 in just a second. It says, For all flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass, and the grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word by the gospel which is preached unto you. Amen. Our salvation comes from something that is incorruptible. Incorru it can't be corrupted. Right? That, that means, and there's a lot of scripture back that up, that means that you, you should be able to lay your hands on an incorrupted Bible. Amen. It doesn't have garbage in it and doesn't have stuff taken out of it. You should be able to lay your hands on in, on the incorruptible Word of God because man can't mess it up. Right? Although they try, and the devil tries too. But but then it goes to talking about the flesh is grass and all the glory of man is a flower of grass. So this, this salvation that you own this uh, the, is not due to you. Right? Because if you try to glory in this this purifying that you that you went through, if you try to glory in any obedience that you do, said it's just like grass. You'll get cut down, thrown into the fire, as, as John fifteen says. You don't you don't take glory in something God has given you the ability to do. All glory goes to God. Amen. All, all glory goes to God. Man, well, you can say, boy, I'm having a good day. Look, and I got I got food on my plate. Who gets the glory for that? God does. Well, you know what? I worked 40 hours this week. I deserve a good no. No, who gave you that job? God gave you that. You know, who gave you everything? Anything and everything that you have, we should be giving glory to God for. Amen? Not of ourselves. Because of what happens? Your glory is cheap. It's junk. It's, 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 it's as grass that needs heaped up and burnt in a ditch. It's not worth anything. So we should be giving all of our glory and all of our honor to God the Father. 
Now I said in this in this says the being born again by the incorruptible seed by the word of God. Turn with me back to into James 1.18. That's the go back that way to your left to the book of James. We just finished James in Bible study on Wednesday mornings, and boy, that is a good book. So much truth. I think it took us a long time to get through it. <laughs> just about all summer. So James 1, verse 18, says, Of his own will he begat us with the word of truth. Amen? How, did he, how are we begat? How are we born again? The word of truth. What is the word of truth? God's holy word. Right here. The word of truth. How are we born again? By the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. That we should, what, what does that mean? Be kind of the first fruits of his creatures. That when we're born again, we are, that word that is in us is a seed that is planted. What's, what's, Jan, what's uh, John 15 says? So we bring forth fruit a hundredfold. The, like, just like the parable of the sower. Bring forth fruit a hundredfold. When God puts his word in us, it's not to, to sit there and not do anything. It's to change us and mold us so that we can take that seed that's multiplying and put it elsewhere. And keep going. And keep going with it. So it was a, it's the Word of God. What Romans says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Where does faith start with? you got to hear God's Word. So if you're not proclaiming God's Word, then you may keep someone from hearing it. What you should be proclaiming. Amen? We are born again by His precious Word. So He helps us obey. That's number 17 on your list. So look at number 12. We're going to move on. Number 12 on your list says he prophesies through us. Now, a lot of people confuse how, when you say prophecy, when you say prophecies, when you say prophesy, it's confusing. I understand. But this is when he, he prophesies through us, not prophecies. He prophesies through us. 2 Peter 1 20 says, Knowing first, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but by holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Boy, that's, that's a power-packed Scripture. That's one of those Scriptures that, well, how do you know the Word of God is true? Well, because... God gives us the formula of how it was made. Right here. This is how he cooked it up. And in the start of in verse 20 first, knowing this verse that no prophecy of Scripture, and, and that's, not, not, that's not including any prophecies that are outside of Scripture, but the prophecies that are of Scripture that's contained in God's Word. Here. No prophecies of Scripture is of any private interpretation. What does that mean? Does that mean, well, I can't interpret it. Well, well you're kind of right. You, you kind of need the Holy Ghost to do that too. Luke 24, 45, my favorite scripture. He opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings understanding. But, it, but that right there, that phrase, means it's not of any private interpretation. Nobody made it up of their own will. Nobody said, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to say God did this. Right? Any of those things is not in our scripture. You know, they're, they have the, the uh, apocryphal books of the Bible. They have the Gnostic Gospels. They have all these other books. And there's a reason that they're not in my Bible. Because they don't agree with my Bible. Every one of them. I, I read them all. And some, like the Maccabees, it's interesting. It's history. It's a historical book. It's not Holy Scripture. There's a difference, right? It's not holy, for one. And is it preserved? I don't think so. So, But we have a holy book with us, and nothing in here is in here 
unless God said it, somebody recorded it, and it's saved and preserved in my Bible. Amen? So it's not of any private interpretation. Nobody wrote this on their own. They didn't, sit, didn't just make it up. And then verse 21, for the prophecy, and prophecy, what's, what's prophecy? He said he prophesies through us. Well, what is prophecy? Now, we, we, there's two definitions of prophecy. Old Testament and then New Testament, two different words. You know, I'm not going to get into the Greek and the Hebrew of it all. There's two different. One is a foretelling of future events. Right? It's, it's saying, okay, I, like, uh, like Daniel, prophesying of the second coming of Christ. Prophesying when, or even the first coming of Christ. That this is what's going to happen. Amen. You know, that's the way it goes. Another type of foretelling of events is uh, using the Word of God. When Peter says in, in Acts 2, repent or perish. That, that's, that's a foretelling of what's going to happen unless you do something to change that. Right? Is it when, when Jonah goes to Nineveh? Took a long way to get there. The wrong way to get there. When he gets there, he tells them, repent. you got 40 days. Repent. Repent. And what do they do? But he said, God's going to burn this place to the ground. You're going to be the next Sodom and Gomorrah unless you change. What do they do? They all repented. That didn't make Jonah none too happy. Right? We should have. Something wrong with Jonah. Obviously. But... Uh, but they repented and they changed. So that was a foretelling of future events that can be changed. Right? So like, like the prophecies of Christ's first coming and his second coming, that, that can't be changed. That, that's going to happen. You and I are not going to do anything to change the fact that Jesus is coming. Right? Now the, 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 the foretelling of God told you to tell somebody, you know, if, you, if you don't change your ways, Turn from your sin, trust in Jesus, you will die and go to hell. That's that's also a prophecy. And then the third time, uh, the third way of prophecy is speaking God's will through speaking God's word. The preaching of God's word is also prophecy, declaring God's word. And, and uh, look it up in in Thayer's dictionary. It says it like this. A discourse emanating from divine inspiration and declaring the purposes of God. That's a beautiful definition. I don't know who wrote that. Who wrote that? It's kind of poetic. A discourse emanating from divine inspiration and declaring the purposes of God. So that could be preaching. That could be foretelling of future events. Whatever that is. But it's saying, I'm declaring God's will be in God's word for God's purpose. By Him, for Him, and to Him. Amen. So, so back to the scripture here. Verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. It said it wasn't men that did it. No private interpretation. But it came, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's saying something. Just, just to look back and you see all the different writers in Scripture, those that wrote that down, what's it say about them? They were holy men of God. They weren't just random Joes. These were people that trust, believed, and walked in a way that is foreign to many people. These were holy men of God, and they spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Who, who moved them to, and we say this like, like the Holy Spirit was the hand and the men were the pen. Right in God's Word. Preserved, inspired, and perfect. So the, so the Holy Spirit was, was prophesying through God's Word. Now how can He do that through us? The Holy Spirit, he, it says He prophesies through us. What if what if God said, "Hey, you need to you need to go to that Randy guy. And you, you need to share this scripture with him." Amen. Declaring, <laughs> declaring God's word for God's purpose, because 
Something's wrong with Randy. He needs to hear God's word declared to him. It was that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. He maybe he's just maybe drawn back a little bit. Maybe he's a little weak in his faith. So you need to prophesy, take God's word and give it to him. That's, that's just one one way of doing that. How how did the Holy Spirit speak to us? Should be every day, all day. Like I said, you gotta get your Holy Ghost radio tuned in. How do you do that? Get rid of sin through the obedience. It comes through trusting and believing in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit of God. So He prophesies through us, and He speaks God's will. Now, what what the one thing you can know for sure is, you know, you know the Bible warns that there are going to be false prophets. So, if there's false prophets, it means there's true prophets. There's people that are declaring of their own accord. And according to their own will of a private interpretation and there's those that are declaring God's will motives what's their motive well that's not from God you just twist the scripture all up what's your motive for the most part I'm a warrant this filthy lucre for money's sake turn, turn, hold your spot there in 2 Peter and turn back with me to Jeremiah 14 I'd say, boy, I wish you could just go on and get through it. But no, I think it's important for those that break their Bibles need to be able to find it in their Bible and read it so they know I'm not just making things up. Right? Bring your Bible, read it in your own Bible. Right? You know, there was a time and a, and a date where you didn't come to church without your Bible. And I, I try not to go anywhere without my Bible. You never know when you don't need a Bible. It's it's, it's the sword of God, right? If, if I was a soldier going into battle, I'd be I'd be uh, pretty stupid to go into go into battle without my word, without my sword, without my weapon. So I got my Bible as my weapon. It's my sword, and my shield. So Jeremiah chapter fourteen, verse fourteen. The Lord said unto me, the prophets. Prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. God's saying, hey, these people, they're telling you what you want to hear. They're saying nice things in their in your ears. They're saying Say things that, that make you feel good about yourself as in pet your flesh, you know, make you feel comfortable, make you be happy. You know, God's word doesn't always make you feel happy. No. It doesn't it doesn't, and it's kind of designed to not make you feel good about yourself if you got something about yourself that needs changing. Right? It's designed to make you feel convicted, to make you change. To make you go in a different direction that you might be going. It's not all about fluffy puppy dogs and and unicorns and rainbows and rose colored glasses. Sometimes it's tough and it's hard, amen. Amen. So this said Jeremiah said, Hey, the Lord said to prophesy, prophesy lies in my name. They're going out saying, Hey, I'm from the Lord, I'm some big guy. I talked to the God, I talked to God. This is what God told me to tell you. You're going to have money. Mm. Pay your tithe. You're going to have money. And you're going to have a big house. That old car you're driving, you're going to go in the scrap heap. You're going to get a new car. If you just send in your love gift in 1999. Mm. You need to be out TV. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> the New Testament is pretty clear. It's about the motivation. Fattening up the bank account. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 23. Chapter 23, verse... 25 says, I have heard what the prophets said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How many of them, we, we, well, I don't remember what that guy's name is, not too long ago, he had a dream. Boy, it was just all over Facebook and YouTube, and this guy was just super popular. He ended up writing books, made a million dollars, and doing well. He probably, he said the Lord was coming back on such and such day. Now, now pay attention. If anybody ever says they know when Jesus is coming back, 
They are a thief and a liar. Amen? No man knows. Jesus said, nobody knows. Only the Father knows. If anybody... Oh, yeah, Jonathan Gone. That's a big one. Yeah, he's, I don't know how many times he's done that. But if somebody picks on um, one day or even a season, they think he's going to come back in October of 2024. Kick the people to the curb and don't. The Bible says, do not fear them and don't listen to them. They, they, they don't have any right to open their mouth to be heard anymore. Right? Adios, Senor. Sayonara, don't let the door, the door hit you when the good Lord splits you. Get out. <laughs> we, we don't, we're not going to live this to you anymore. But this, this one says specifically, these prophets are saying, hey, I had a dream from God. I had a dream. This is what was going to happen. I had a dream. Sound like Martin Luther King. I had a dream. <laughs> right? But it's, we have to watch what people say. How do you know? How do you know? Well, for one, if, if the Holy Spirit is living inside you, then discernment should say, whoa, wait a second. That may sound good, but it ain't right. Right? You should have a check inside your spirit. Number, number two, does it line up with God's Word? Right? And then how do you know if it lines up with God's Word if you don't know it? That's why we have to study. we got to know. So we know if it lines up with God's Word or not. Okay? So turn, turn back to Second Peter there. i got to move on. So the, so the the different kinds of prophecy, we went over that. We went over how, how do you know if what's being said is the Holy Spirit or whether it's coming from your own mind. Does it line up with the Word? All right, I'm going to move on. And number four on your list, what's it say? It says He speaks. Amen. He speaks. He, being the Holy Spirit of God, speaks. Turn to Revelation 2. I'm going to try to hurry here. Last book of the Bible, Revelation 2, verse 7. In 2, verse 7, it says, He that hath an ear. I got two of them, right? <laughs> One of them don't work so good. It's, he that hath an ear. Do we have ears, right? But do we have an ear that's tuned in to hearing God? That's that's the big thing. Do we have ears? This is not just having physical ears to hear a physical voice like like you're listening to me right now. It's having ear of the Spirit of God that's tuned in to God. He says, "He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, Spirit saith unto the churches." This is talking about the seven churches in Revelation. Right? Seven churches in Revelation. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Do you have an ear to hear? But so out of this, in Revelation 2 and Revelation 3, speaking to the seven churches, he's got three dire warnings. And I don't know how many times did he tell them, you need to repent. You need to repent. You need to repent. And said, I know what you're doing, but you're lacking. You gotta fix this area. You gotta straighten up. And you look at Revelation 2 7, look at look at number or verse 11. What's it say there? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. Look at verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. Is he trying to get your attention? Verse 29. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said. Got your attention yet? Look at chapter 3, verse 6. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said. But, and again, in, in verse 13, chapter 3. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said. In, in verse 22. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said. I, I don't know about you, but if, you, if you're going over there and, and you don't get it, it's just not being grasped to you. Then you got a hearing problem. Right? Even though you're reading it, you're hearing it through your spirit. And you don't grasp it, but you've got a, a hearing issue. And you need to talk, the dial in to the Holy Spirit, maybe you got something in the way. You got something distracting you, something blocking 
what from seeing and hearing what you need to be hearing. And you've got to get tuned in. I mean, up in, you don't have to turn there. Revelation 14, verse 13. He says again, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the day are the dead which die in the Lord henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit. A lot of people say, What's the Holy Spirit's role in heaven? Apparently, He's still speaking. And I'm not going to go through all the verses. They talk about how the Holy Spirit is still speaking, but there's quite a few. Turn with me to Matthew 10. Matthew 10. We're going to hit a few of them. Verse 19. Jesus is given a, given a warning here of how to prepare. Because when tribulation comes and, and trials come, and it says they're, they're going to throw you in front of rulers, in front of judges, in front of people that are going to condemn you to death. When you have this opportunity, what do you do? So, chapter Matthew 10, 19 says, When they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak. For it shall be given you in the same hour what you shall speak. Where is it going to be given from? Who is it going to give you? Right? For it, Verse 20, For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father that speaketh in you. Amen. It's not you to speak. Whenever, whenever God tells you, hey, you need to go talk to so and so. What am I going to say? Don't worry. Just go. Go talk to so and so. God will give you what to say. When, there, when somebody is railing against you, well, I don't know what to say, God, when that happens. Good. Then maybe you'll trust in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Turn, turn up to John 3. That's where John 3.16 is. You didn't know that. John 3, verse 34. It says, For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto them. Where do they get in the words of God to speak? It says God doesn't give the Spirit by measure. He gives, he gives faith by measure. He gives you something to start with. But he says he doesn't give the spirit by measure. He said they've got the whole shebang. I'm giving it all to you. You got every day, everything that you need by the Spirit of God to do what God needs you to do. And that's true for each and every one of us. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have every tool you need to go and do what God needs you to do. Just and so many of us we want to wait. We want we know what, what I want to do, what I want to do. Maybe, maybe I think i got to jump to this hoop or that hoop. God says, I, got, I gave you everything. Go build my kingdom. Don't build your house, build my kingdom. It says, well, God gives not the Spirit by measure unto them. So they speak the word of God. Turn, turn to John 14, verse 26. i just got a couple more here. Hold on to your hats. It says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall do what? Teach, Teach you some things. No. No. Everything. Everything. Come on, Joe, preach it. <laughs> <laughs> he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I've said unto you. Boy, I need a lot of that. And, and sometimes it just it just blows me away. Boy, I didn't know that I knew that scripture, but God gave it to me right when I needed to know that scripture. Right? It says He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Everything Jesus said, everything that's in His Word, is the Holy Spirit's job to bring it to your remembrance. Right? And it says bring it to your remembrance. That means you first had to know it, and He brought it to your remembrance. Right? You first had to read it, and he brought it back so you would remember it. Not just something that you never ever read before. It's something brought it back to your remembrance. Look at chapter 16, verse 13. Chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, that's the Holy Spirit of God, he will guide you unto some truth. All truth. And 
wrong. He will guide you unto into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Ooh, show you things to come. The Holy Spirit does what? He's going to tell you everything you need to know. Everything that the Father speaks to the Holy Spirit, He's going to relay the message to you, and then even He's going to show you things to come. That's the, that's the foretelling prophecy. Things to come. Amen? One more verse. 1 Corinthians 2. Last verse. 1 Corinthians 2. Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians I'm going to start with verse 9. But as it's written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. For them that love him. Not the people that don't love God don't get these things, right? God prepared this for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us, how? By his Spirit. That's how we get to... Had to, had to get to see these things or experience these things that God has in store. God revealed them to us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, even the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So you don't know nothing without God's Spirit. You're ignorant without God's Spirit of the things of God. You may know how to how to you know work on a car or fix this or add this or whatever. You may know about computers, but if you don't know about the things of God, but by the Spirit of God. In verse 12, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Why is, why is God giving you the his Spirit? Well, because He needs you to know something. Right? You need, you need the knowledge and the wisdom to use it. Verse 13. Which things also we speak. That, that's saying we speak. We're, we're, we're doing something. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. But who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The, the Spirit of God teaches you all things. Natural men can't receive the things. They can't understand the things that the Spirit of God gives you. And He teaches you. How does He teach you? Through His Spirit. How does He let you know what you need to know? Through His Spirit. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you ain't going to know it. Amen? He needs to know. Next, next week, I'm going to look at number 18. It, the Holy Spirit, He calls for Jesus' return. And I'm going to start, start talking about the return of Jesus Christ. That's something we, we all need to be looking forward to. That we all need to be looking towards. Uh, people think it's funny. When, when we was walking over to, to Progresso, you know, they got the bathroom over there. Stand outside. You do this at Walmart too. Just stand outside and look up. People walk by, and they look up too. It's contagious. So what are you doing? Looking for Jesus. <laughs> Looking for Jesus. And you can start a conversation like that. It's pretty amazing. So we're going to go, that's the last thing on my 35 things. And he tells about his return. Amen. And we need to be doing the same thing. Jesus is coming soon. Morning or night or noon. Amen. Let's pray.